This is the Power of Teen America podcast, and today we've got junior and sub junior U.S. national team coach Vin Mangione. Vin is a coach, a lifter, a referee, meat director, and a gym owner. He does a lot for the sport, and he's bringing a big squad of lifters to PA Nats in one week. After that, he'll be coaching the U.S. national teams at the North American Championships in the Cayman Islands and the junior and sub junior world championships in Romania. We talked about the qualifying criteria for those competitions, his game day coaching strategy, how he's built such a strong community in Buffalo, and the growing rivalry with Team France. Before we start, make sure you tune in to the grand finale of the national championship, sub junior, junior masters, and equipped national starting June 2nd. Every session is stacked with talent, starting off with a bang on Friday morning with a four way battle in the 63 kilo juniors and loaded battles and solo performances all the way through. It'll be streamed live, and we always have the live events tab on our website for national championships. And we'll also post a link on our Instagram story at PowerTeen underscore America, so make sure you follow us there. Thank you to SBD and Aleco for the continued partnership with PowerTeen America. If you're looking to compete in drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting America.com and become a member. Now, let's get to this interview with Vin Mangioni. What's up? I got the U.S. national team coach, gym owner, meat director, stash god, Vin Mangione. What's going on, man? How you doing, man? Doing well. Did I uh, get your name right? How do I pronounce your last name? Uh, well, you got it right um, in the American way. If uh-huh. you want to, you know, add the Italian flair to it, you just emphasize the E at the end, so it's a little bit Mangione. Maggioni, huh? Oh, yeah. All right. Yep. So, you so your your last name is not Kenmore. Um, no, it's I not. Found this. I found this out the hard way uh, <laughs> in the past. What is Kenmore? To tell, because everyone who knows you by Vin Kenmore, right? That's right. your Instagram handle. So Kenmore is just a small little city just outside of Buffalo, a little town actually. Mm-hmm. Um, that the gym is located in. So yeah. it was just an easy way to name the gym and. There's some things in the works, though, that we might be rebranding into the future. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. yeah, it's just the city where the gym is, and it is not my last name. Okay. <laughs> so just to clarify that so you don't get too many DMs about it. Yep. Um, so how are things going in general, man? Everything going good? Yeah, uh, busy. Um, a lot of good stuff to look forward to. Um, Meets-wise, just life-wise, uh, everything. So, you yeah. know. Even with the day to day as busy as it is at times, it's it's the, it's been good. It's been good to me, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I know you're busy. We stay in pretty close touch. You're traveling a lot. You know, you're a ref. Um, I don't know if I if I hit that on the on the intro, but you're a referee. You're a national referee now. I mean, you just you got a lot of irons in the fire. You keep it moving, and you're a hell of a coach, man. Um, we had Joy on here, and she just speaks so highly of you. So does everyone. You, you're really doing something special up there in Buffalo, or. Kenmore, New York. Um, Buffalo's, Buffalo's more uh, notable. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That, so. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it seems like everything's going good, man. You got a great crew going there in the gym. I see you in there, like doing handoffs for everyone and their brother, um, everyone on your team and in your squad. It looks like you're just basically live in the gym. And then on top of that, you got all this other stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot going on, but no, the gym's fun. A uh, good group that I work with and, um, it's just, it makes it easier to be there every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some days it gets tiring, but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily envy me either. Uh, you know, it's, it looks fun from the outside, but there's a lot of day to day that just makes it sometimes stressful. Um, mm-hmm. but no, overall it's great. And, uh, you know, you never really know what the next day is going to bring. Um, we're, we're looking towards expansion soon, uh, just within the space we have now, um, we hold, you know, four meets a year there with more in the pipeline. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff to, uh, to, to talk about gym wise. Um, no, overall it's great. Some days it's pain in my ass, but it is what it is. I mean, it, it, the pain in the ass comes from your own ambition though, because like you, you could easily just sort of like you know, not expand the gym. You got a hell of a roster already. You could just not take on more clients. Um, but you're super ambitious. So, I mean, you got goals in life. You're a young man still and everything. And, you know, you're trying to really do something special and it takes hard work to do that. So, I mean, and absolutely. you know, it's not all roses. No, absolutely not. So, but, but, you know, I, I was, I, from experience, I mean, I'm actually getting goosebumps right now. Um, just when you walk into, to Kenmore Barbell, I mean, it's a different vibe, man. Like it's, it's a very family feeling thing, but also extremely serious, um, extremely fun. Do you think like when, cause I see you in there, you're in your flip flops, you're fucking yeah. look like you just roll out of bed. Sometimes you're in there and you're, you know, uh, doing handoffs and just helping everyone spotting people on squats and stuff like that. I mean, that part of it has to just be like, 
turn off the mind on everything else that you got going on with all the other business moves and things and just like give a handoff to joy or spot someone on a squat on a grind yeah. or something. No, it's always fun to be, uh, I guess you could call it in the trenches with everyone and just, yeah. just be in there for them. Um, you know, they appreciate it. It's fun to just watch them, you know, progress over time and, and kind of go through their journeys. You know, everyone's at their own, on their own chapter, right? They're all, some of them are just getting started. Some of them are a little bit more advanced, um, but it's just fun being around them all and just watching them progress and develop and, and become not just better lifters, but just better people, you know, day to day. So it's just, but that's what, that's, I, I mean, that's what I'd want. I, I wouldn't want to run a gym and not be present um there's certainly some days i'm not there as much and the, you know of course with travel coming up i won't be there but you know when i can be there that you know i want to be there so you know but that's also the neat part i don't have to be there all the time i can be there when i want um but like you said we brought up there's just a lot of other things going on that i have to attend to as well so yeah. but that's the beauty of uh you know business ownership is you can delegate you can be where you need to be you don't have to be at the gym 24 seven, you can go do what you got to do and, you know, come back later if you wish. Like, so yeah, no, it's, it's fun. It's just overall, it's fun and, you know, stressful at times, but yeah. the good, a lot of the good times definitely make it worthwhile. So exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. So anyone looking to open a gym, just kind of keep that in mind. Like you're going to have to be present. Um, you're going to have to work to build and develop a culture that you like um it will be tough in the beginning probably um and you just got to stick with it so it takes time to yeah. really to build something so don't get discouraged if it's not working out right away yeah when did you open the gym because i mean it feels like overnight success but it's been a minute no it's been a while uh 2015 um yeah. sometime in august 2015 i opened i was just finishing up college and i didn't know what the hell i was doing dude i just like yeah. the area was void of any type of like real powerlifting type gym um and it's around the same time when powerlifting like it had already or like always been around but it was around that time when like raw powerlifting was really kind of becoming popular um i think a large part due to social media and you know the 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 big national events that were being kind of developed and put on at the time so it was a good time to get into it um and yeah, and I think too, just getting into the sport around that time, you know, it wasn't as like chaotic and and just cringy as it is now. Um, <laughs> not sure if I was, if I weren't in it already, I don't know that I'd want to be in it now, like just mm -hmm. stepping into it for like the first time. Mm -hmm. so I think I just overall got into it at, at the right time. And I've been able to kind of carve out my gym, carve out my, my coaching style and, and all of that over time. And I don't feel like a I feel like a pioneer of sorts, but, um, yeah, here we are. So, yeah, man, I think people will see, you know, your success that you've had in the last couple of years and, and think it's like super easy or whatever, but like, you're, you're going on eight years into this game. So yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're not, you're just a stone's throw away of being in it for a decade. Right. So it's definitely something that takes, you know, a lot of foundation building, um, before, you know, things are going to really pop off. Exactly. And it definitely takes, uh, you know, it takes a few people like joy, and, you know, some other bigger name lifters, more popular name lifters, Audrey, mm -hmm. um, to kind of recognize you and, and join forces, if you will. And yeah. just, you know, you definitely like you, you, you know, kind of make it in coaching. You got to have a couple of those people on your roster, mm -hmm. um, but you got to do right by them and you got to, you know, find success for them. And um, it's not always easy, but we, we do our best to, uh, to do that for them. Yeah. And I mean, I just love to see too, though, like, um, you know, the whole crew in Buffalo, man, I've been out there a few times and it's just like, it's a different vibe. It's a, it's a super tight knit community in your gym. I mean, you're in there giving handoffs to David Jackson's like 14 years old, <laughs> you know, spotting him on squats and stuff yep. and like Paul, yep. Paulie G let's give him a shout out, you know, and turbo turbo. That's his new nickname. Now. I mean, and these are people that, you know, um, people, people nationally may not recognize or whatever, but like, that's the thing. Like you, you give them just the same amount of attention and stuff as you right. would give joy when they're, when you're in there in the trenches with them and whatnot. And they kind of, I'm sure feel special that, Hey man, this guy's over here with these superstar athletes like joy and Audrey. And he's also over here with Paulie and David Jackson, and everyone yeah, else that's in exactly. there. So. I just try to be, I try to treat everyone the same and, and I do my best to give everyone equal amounts of attention, but you know, it's near impossible yeah. to do that. Like everyone's training schedules are different. Yeah. Um, but 
No, I just, you know, I always try to say hi to everybody, even people I don't coach at the gym. Just, hey, how you doing? Like, you just try to treat people right and uh, make them feel welcomed and, and they appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember saying, man, last time I was in your gym, I was like, man, this is just the place. Like, you walk through the door and you just feel like this is home. Like, it feels like I've only been in your gym, like, maybe two or three times. And it just, like, just feels like, you know, as yeah. a power lifter, you, you walk in there and it's just like, yeah, you feel like you're right at home. So yeah. um, yeah. you're doing a great job. Um, all right, let's get into some stuff. So first thing, uh, current events wise, did you watch Sheffield? What was your take on it? Yeah, I did. Um, most, I think I actually, I think I watched the entire thing. I, I, you know, I broke it up. I had it on at the gym. Um, and so we were watching it there as a group and it was just the cool vibe to just turn on some powerlifting and it yeah. feel like it's like a, you know, a, a pay-per-view type event. Yeah. Um, so it was just, I think overall it was great. I mean, it's the event everyone's been waiting for. And the one that was, you know, derailed by, you know, the, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I think it lived up to its, to its hype. Um, I would say, and yeah. the lifting was phenomenal. Uh, I liked how they scored it. I mean, it, it was unique. It was a different way to score that because I mean, how, how else really would you do that? Mm -hmm. Um, well, yeah, I think too, it, uh, it definitely, I think will create a shift too amongst powerlifting in terms of who might now want to come over to the IPF and, and take a run at that. Um, especially if it's something chef that they'll be doing, you know, yearly. Uh, so yeah. I guess to that would matter. I, I think they're doing it next year, right? Yeah, or of course it was just announced yesterday. Um, you know, posted, they dropped the new logo SHF Sheffield logo. It looks like kind of a, a throwback off of like a wrestling or even like an NFL style. It almost looks like yeah. an NFL yeah. uh, SHF uh, Sheffield, you know, logo and everything like that. They, they announced the date it's February 10th, which you know, you, you, nothing real big going on for Bills fans, but for Chiefs fans, <laughs> it's the day before the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, we'll probably be back to back. So I don't know to figure yeah, out we'll how to see. watch both. We'll see. It, it, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen with the, the Bills. I know I'd say we, we beat you, but we never really beat you when it matters. So, um, yeah. I can't, I can't get too, too out of line here. Um, but <laughs> no, just off topic with that no i think the bills will be right there again uh of it, course they should be they should be i mean if they were able to win 13 last year with everything that went on um make it to you know that dismal abysmal game against cincinnati it was i was there it was terrible yeah, um it's rough but yeah i think we could get back to the uh the afc championship for sure probably against was, kansas but I was there. Um, that's crazy. Um, cause you know, yeah, I was, I was with you. I was at your yeah, house was, watching yeah, it dude, while was, you were was, at the game. Bro, I was out uh, till 4 a.m. And then I went to the game. I was yeah. shocked. So yeah, that's how we do it in, in, in Buffalo though. Is like after well, that was meet. because we had our meet, right? We had the meet yeah. and the after party and then, you know, I after party. was able to kind of let go and let loose for a little bit and just go enjoy myself and yeah, you know, a little too much of that, but it is what it is. But yeah, anyway, um, uh, so Sheffield, yeah, it's been announced. Uh, the price money has gone up. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, like basically going to be bigger and better than ever. I mean, they're obviously, they're already starting with the promote, the heavy promotion of it, you know, over you yep. know a year out or whatever, um, less than a year out, I guess at this point. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's should be pumped. It should be exciting. Were there any, you know, performances that popped off that you, you know, really appreciated or anything like that? Um, I mean, I think, I think the biggest, I mean, Jesus' performance was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but I think the one that really stood out was Evie's. Like yeah. no one had her, you know, even she wasn't even a thought to win. Um, and she just showed up and she performed and she ended up winning. So I think for for that, it's just like it just goes to the show, like show up, like it just show up and just give your best effort and make your lifts and anything can happen. So you're never really out of it until unless you count yourself out. And yeah. she just she just performed, and you know, I was, it was getting towards the end. And I'm like, oh wow, this girl can win it. Like she was yeah. projected like tenth or last. I don't. I think there was ten women. Yeah. Um, she was projected to lose. Like it was outright, like completely last place, and then ends up winning it. So just goes to show, you just show up. Yeah. Like, it just, it's all that matters at first. Like you just got to get there. You get there, and anything can happen because yeah. you know everyone's probably coming in a little beat up. You got that travel. You got just people are going to take some risks with some attempts to, to kind of, you know, force people to make decisions and anything's possible. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about like, 
um, you know, there was a lot of attempt changes at the end, um, especially like with Evie and Noemi going back and forth. And then uh, on the men's side as well, just trying to get that placing up with like the percentage of the world record and everything. Like as a coach, um, did that seem exciting to you? Did that seem like fun, like number crunching and stuff yeah, it's, or it's more complicated, fun. more complicated than normal? Or? Yeah, I think it's fun. I think that the stakes are higher there. So you're going to just try to inch out every, every kilo you can. Um, and then of course you're forcing your competitors to make decisions they may not want to make. Um, so, but you know, it's, it's at that level too, where they're just going to leave it all out there. And, you know, you might be like, Hey, but there's no way they pull this and, and they end up pulling it because you just certain lifters are just going to rise to the occasion, you know, and they're going to leave it all out there, whether they make or miss. So, um, but yeah, as a coach, it's just cool. It's just fun to watch. Um, it's what you want to see. It's exciting. And you know, I, I just, I expect the same for next year, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it looks like, you know, they're, they're really on top of it. Um, they're already, you know, dropping stuff and whatnot. So it's going to be a lot of hype. I, I'm just excited too. like the, the prize money went up, which is mm -hmm. crazy. It was already like by far, like the biggest. Yeah, that's uh, money definitely, ever. Yeah, that's enticing. I think that that alone is going to uh, catch some eyes and, you know, you're going to see some, some names move over just because of that. For sure. For sure. And I, I mean, I think every young lifter should be inspired to want to be at Sheffield one day. Yeah. No, I know. Like... I was texting joy that day. She was watching, she was at work. Um, yeah. I texted her, I said, Hey, you know, you can be here one day. And she was like, yeah, I, I want to. So um, <laughs> definitely on our radar. Um, and again, it's just one of those things. It's one of those goals where she just has to stay in the sport long enough and she can definitely get there. Mm -hmm. one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost fitting. It's it's a day before Super Bowl because it's the Super Bowl of powerlifting now. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's the biggest event. Uh, it's the biggest, most important event. Uh, everyone's buzzing about it. There'll be a ton of media hype around it and everything like this. So really very similar to the Super Bowl. Of course, it'll be fun. So, so yeah. All right. Um, the other thing I was going to ask, did you hear? Um, so we just dropped the junior and sub junior uh, preview show for coming up. You know, we're we're basically exactly a week out from junior and sub junior nationals in Scottsdale, Arizona it starts June 2nd. Um, did you hear the breaking news? Jessica Espinall might want to be doing uh, junior worlds. Um, I didn't, but I was hoping she would. Uh, yeah. John and I talked about that and it was something we uh, were hoping she would want to do. Um, obviously it'll be up to her and I'm sure depending on how she does in Malta, we'll kind of help make that decision for her. Um, but no, we were hoping she'd want to, you know, come back and uh you know go to romania so but i did not hear that it's the first time i'm hearing it so but yeah, yeah. because i was hoping she would want to for sure um you know she dm'd me and just was like hey let them know it, you know depending on how things go in malta but i'm really looking at uh coming over to to junior worlds and just doing yeah. it anyway so so make I mean, sure she's already she's already on the roster like she's got her spot mm -hmm. um so it was just yeah it's just waiting to to hear it from her that she wants to uh yeah come do it in Romania. So we'll, we'll see. We'll let it play out though. And um, when are, are, are the, are the nominations um, for junior worlds? Will that happen after Malta? Um, yeah. I mean, she's, I, think so. I mean, she's so, on the roster simply because she competed open Nats. So yeah. similar, we, we kind of talked about the Carolyn situation before getting on this, but yeah. similar to that, she's, she's on the roster because, because of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so she's in the alternate pool we'll get into all that by the yeah, way we'll um, get into it but yeah as of now she's technically by our selection process um a secondary or that uh yeah that like secondary selection type of thing yeah um, because she didn't compete in one of the events from the that are you know allowed in the primary so yeah yeah all right we'll get into that but yeah anyway breaking news i like to do this little breaking news stuff at the top um <laughs> And um, that was something that uh, was was really cool. Um, I, you know, we we spill a little bit of gossip and a little behind the scenes action on this on the Power of Team America podcast here and there. Um, it's good. So, all right, we're a week out from Junior Nats. How are you feeling about it, and what are you looking forward to the most? Um, well, I have seven of my own athletes competing, um, so I have at least one lifter every day, every session. Mm -hmm. uh and then i'm taking on a kid in the i think he's a sub junior justin noller um mm -hmm. he might be a junior i don't remember he's in one of the the lighter men's classes uh, he reached out and wanted me to handle him so 
he's gonna he's gonna join us for that day so it brings us up to eight um but no i'm just i'm looking forward to the entire thing uh mm -hmm. the, the event itself is growing from last year there's more yeah. lifters um i think there should be much more competition throughout um you know, some of the, you, you just, you know, expectations for some of the weight classes, you kind of already know who's going to win, or at least who you expect to win. Um, but I mean, the 63 women in particular, um, just because I have a lot of skin in the game with that one, yeah. um, it's going to be exciting. It's probably going to be one of the more competitive uh, weight classes just of the entire weekend. Um, and then of course, you know, it's mainly because, you know, I got joy competing in that class, but yeah um but yeah it's just I think the entire weekend's gonna be fun uh for me you know outside of just coaching my my athletes you know it's you're finally starting to put all the pieces together for the the, the, the national teams yeah. so it's that final you know event or meet that we need to solidify these rosters and start sending out our uh you know our invites which is something John and I've been looking forward to since this whole thing started yeah, and all the lifters that have been to high school nationals and university yep, nationals yep. and stuff there. Everyone in my DMs asking me, hey, when does this happen? When is that? Like, like just patience. Like, it's yep. it's happening. So, I mean, we sent out some stuff to kind of get an idea of who would accept an invite if, you know, they are selected, uh, if they wouldn't, you know, just stuff to expedite things because we won't have a lot of turnaround time. to Yeah. To, so, especially for the NAPF stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For the NAPF team in particular. Yeah. So, I mean, people check your emails from these coaches, make sure you're getting all that ADEL stuff taken care of, you know, like all the stuff you can do in advance, get it done. So you can accept right away when you get the invite. Yeah. Because we need all that information. Uh, we need, uh, the ADEL certification to show that you completed it. Um, and that's all got to be sent in when we send in our preliminaries. So, yeah. So, um, give us, give us a little behind the scenes, what Joy's packing for, uh, for Scottsdale here. She's in a battle. So you mentioned it We're this is the opening, this will be the opening session of the entire competition will be one of the most stacked weight classes, 63 kilo junior women. There's like basically like a four way battle for first place where any one of them could, depending on how the day goes, could possibly win. Start talk about starting off with a bang, right. Uh, for this whole competition. So yeah, I know you don't want to give away any secrets. Um, no, you don't want to no. say too much, but hype us up, build the hype, give us some little bit of suspense and, and drama about what might happen in that weight class. Well, I mean, if anyone that follows Joy knows she's going to be posting her, her lifts and stuff. I mean, it's just part of, you know, her being an influencer and yeah, whatnot. So there's really no secrets there as to what she's capable of. Um, but, you know, she's been really working hard. And I know I'm, I'm confident, you know, and of course, it just depends on how the day's going, um, that she can win. Uh, and I mean, the whole thing going into it was, you know, we will win. Um, but, you know, again, she's got to show up, she's got to perform. And, you know, what you see on the internet isn't exactly joy, right? You, know, you see internet joy. Um, I've seen platform joy, and it's two different lifters. Um, when she's locked in, she is, she's locked in, and she is tough to beat. She will push everybody to their limit, and she likes being pushed to hers. So, um, it's just going to be, it's just going to be fun. That's, that's really it. And, uh, she's, she's earned every kilo and whatever she does out there, she has earned, uh, she deserves and it's just up to her to execute. So biggest thing I've been telling her and everybody else, it's just like, whatever I load on that bar, you know, I trust you to execute. That's, that's the thing. It's just trust. And I'm not going to put you in a position to fail. Um, you know, we might have to take some, some risks, but Ultimately, my goal is to put you in a position to succeed, and it's just up to you to execute on the platform. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Um, I love that. I mean, she's got a huge weapon in her in her back pocket with her bench, and then obviously, I think the other ace card up her sleeve is you uh, as her coach. I mean, someone who has really ex you know high level game day coaching experience. A lot of your lifters go eight for nine, nine for nine, right? Like um, Joy often goes nine for nine, and yeah. just. How important is that, you know, for her particularly kind of being like a subtotal specialist with a massive bench to go nine for nine? Um, well, I mean, it's always our goal. Every meet is six for six squats and bench. Um, it just sets us up really well. Her bench nine times out of 10 is going to set her apart. 
And, you know, she might be a bit behind after squats, but her bench is just, I mean, anyone that knows her knows her bench is just at, at a ridiculous level. Um, you know, I think, I don't think anyone's touching a hundred keys in her weight class, as far as I know. Um, and so, I mean, her bench is just on a different level and it just, it, it can bring her back into the meat, you know, as long as it's a three for three day, um, even without it, you know, she can probably pull herself back in, but you know, she will kind of put herself in a bit of a hole if she doesn't. Um, but yeah, for us, it's just six for six is the goal. And then, you know, deadlifts, you know, everyone's like, that's where the meat starts. And you know, to an extent it is. Um, but you know, and her deadlift has been improving. Um, and we'll just kind of, we'll see where, where she's at that day. Um, when she competed in January, she just kind of ran out of gas. And I think, uh, with some of the changes she's made recently, I think we'll be good. So, yeah, yeah. She um, talked about yeah, it. Yeah. Well, let me, uh, one more thing too. You mentioned like the eight for nine, you know, nine for nine days, like biggest thing for me is if the more lifts you make, as long as you're in contention to podium or place or win, um, the more lifts you can make, the better chance you have of doing so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're going to have lifters that come in and trust me, there's lifters that come in very strong on paper and, you know, you, you know, there's projections and predictions and all sorts of other objective things going on out there. And that's all fun, but it just matters what happens on the day up. And quite frankly, I, I don't really care who's she's competing against or anyone's competing against, like bring your best and we're going to bring ours. And I can't focus on that. I can only focus on my athletes and, and putting them in positions to succeed. And that's all I can do. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what I will do. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Um, so like I said, I mean, you're, you're a great game day coach and like, that's definitely a huge weapon, um, to have like someone that's going to put you in a position to win, play the strategy, put the right number on the bar. So she's not pulling more than she has to on our third attempt or anything like that. Right. Just doing everything right. Crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Right. Um, and I'm not sure about her competitors. Some of them have might have really good coaches as well, but some of them might not. Right. So that can be a big difference. No, but and then all the other, you know, all the other competitors are very strong. It's it's going to be competitive. It's going to be fun. Um, and it's just gonna it's just gonna come down to who makes their lifts. That's really what it's going to come down to. Mm -hmm. um, and then too, like just depending on how the day's going, like you know, you just might have to change your strategy on the fly depending on how things are going. And it might be like, hey, we're you know we we're getting we're not going to be able to take a win here. So let's just build the biggest total we can and put ourselves in a position to have an opportunity to be selected to the team. So yeah. that's where another strategy comes in just across the board for everybody. And, yep. Uh, yep. you know, it's something I'll be discussing with the group, you know, going into things. Yeah. And then also being in like a potential four-way battle. I mean, there's a lot, it's much more complicated than just a simple straight up head to head, right? Like, because you have to consider that someone behind you may be pulling for the win or maybe pulling for silver and you might not want to secure. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to go into that final deadlift attempt selection. Exactly. Yeah. It kind of happened uh, at worlds even last year, a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, it was uh, just to secure placing and we just, like I knew Joy could pull what we had on the bar and uh, I wasn't confident in the girl. I think she was from Finland to be able to pull for her, you know, whatever she had for her third. Um, she locked it out, but it was just technically not sound. I think it came back up and down. Um, so I said, Joy, you just got to pull this, just pull this and force them to to do what they need to do. And that's the, that's the strategy I like to take more, more times than not is just yeah. force others to, to outperform. And, you know, we're in a good place just overall. Like I never, I don't like coming into a meet as the favorite. Um, I think it puts a lot of pressure, extra pressure on a lifter. Mm -hmm. um, I know for joy personally, it does. And uh, I just like being in that underdog position because you're always, you're hungrier and the, the person, the favorite typically gets a little bit too comfortable mm -hmm. and they start to make mistakes. And then you just pressure them and you apply the pressure and you force them to to beat you and if they beat you they beat you if they don't then too bad yeah man you're you're sounding like matt gary right now i fucking love it dude um, it's just it's just how i do it man like i just yeah. you know i just it's not you don't always have to be the favorite and the favorite's not always going to win mm -hmm. um it's just the best lifter on that day and that's that's that yeah just like these things like apply pressure you know like i mean if you if if she misses her last deadlift then it's like 
you you just gave the the gold medal away. You know what I mean? It's like hit something you can hit, make them go back out there and make their third deadlift under pressure. Right. You know, it's a lot harder to do it on a national stage under pressure, but it's really easy when the, when your opponent misses their third and then you, you win in the warm up room, like before you even go out and walk out to take exactly. your third, you know, exactly. so, and you never know what happens, man. Like bomb outs happen. Yeah. Um, you just never know. So you just, you can't, you can't go in with a, a predetermined uh, outcome. You just go in and you, you, you put everything out there and you just compete and let sure. whatever happens, happens. Yeah, so people that are on the U.S. national team uh, headed to Romania or on the U.S. national team headed to the Cayman Islands, this is your guy, man. He's going to be calling your attempts and stuff, so you're in good hands here. He knows what he's talking about. Sounds exactly like, you know, all this strategy stuff that you're talking is like straight out of the Matt Gary playbook, one of the most successful game day coaches ever. So um, it's 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 really good to hear that, you know, so that we know we're, our team's in really good hands when they go up against these other countries. Yeah, for sure. Um, speak, um, so put your national team coach, uh, hat on for a second and talk about the other uh, competitors in that 63 class. Um, I mean, I'll be honest. I haven't, I don't, I, I follow Tiara. She's been doing well. Um, mm -hmm. she's having a, what seems to be like a good prep, mm -hmm. uh, Sophia, I don't know. I haven't seen much of her training. Um, I know she has a big squat. I know she has a big deadlift. Uh, that's about all I know. And you know, you know her from uh, Junior Worlds last year. Um, she yeah, was yeah she was there. Um, and she was obviously at Nationals last year as well. Um, yeah. So I know she's, 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 a, she's a threat. Um, Tiara's a threat. They're all a threat. The top four girls there could all win. Uh, it just depends on what, who has the best day. Um, and then you have uh, Daisy at the top with the big total. Um, but, you know, I've seen some of her training and we'll see if she can, uh, turn things around a bit to, to meet some standards, uh, yeah, yeah. On the platform. so, but not to throw shade. It's just, it is what it is. Um, and, but I look at that stuff. I, I, I do that, that type of recon work. Um, you just gotta know what you're going up against, uh, because you know, there's a lot of things I can be doing too mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. space. Um, as you know, you're waiting in the queue area to go out, you know, so we'll, we'll see. I, 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 I will do whatever I need to do for my athletes to win. Um, obviously, <laughs> the rules, of course, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, I'm not, hey, I want to win just as bad as Joy, just as bad as any any of the other athletes that I'm bringing to nationals. Um, we we, we want to win. That's just it. But I want to win at every level. I want to yeah. win at the international level. I yeah. want to, you know, so I, I'm just going to do what I got to do. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that, so. So it's funny. You're such a fierce competitor. You have a hard time uh, taking off your your personal coach hat. Um, and yeah, I do. And I I'm holding back a little bit on some things. Like I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, no, throw shade. Like everyone coming, you know, competing in this class is great. Like it's gonna be fun. Um, it's just again, like whoever has the best day will win, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, like Daisy, she she's a couple years older. Um, she's yep. she got a little more. I think she's gonna age out after this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I want to say she's 21. So I think she has at least another year after this. I'm not sure, but I mean, it's gotta be exciting to think that when we go to Romania, you're going to have a, an absolute shooter at 63, whoever it is that comes out. Yeah. Of it, yeah. In one of the most competitive weight classes in the world. Exactly. And you'll probably, I, I, I'd want to say we're probably going to have two 63s going. That's going to be my guess. Um, just because of how competitive it is, how close all their totals are. Yeah, um, they're all going to be around that 90 GL category or higher. So we'll see. I, I mean, and then, of course, it depends on, you know, if they're available to go, they can afford to go mm -hmm. like all of those, you know, road bumps that, uh, you know, come up as the selection process takes shape. Yeah, 100 percent, man. I'm I'm super pumped. I mean, whoever whoever is it makes it out of this weight class is going to have a good shot over there being super competitive and it'll be a fun, you know, it's fun when you you're in the game and you're, you're fighting for those podium spots, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So either way, however it shakes out. Um, all right. So let's, um, we'll go back to the personal coaching, uh, hat here for a second. Um, right. did you listen to uh joy's episode on the PA podcast? Dude, I have been trying to, I'm like 30 minutes in, like I, just, <laughs> it's, it's I try to toss it on when I'm driving around and sometimes yeah. I'm just lost in my music and I forget, Oh, I was going to listen to Joy's podcast. Uh, but no, yeah. I've only gotten through like 30 or so minutes. Um, but 
so far it's good from what I've yeah. listened to. So uh, the question, just, yeah, go ahead. The question I wanted to, to bring up out of it, she talks about kind of the origin story of, of how she, you know, met you for the first time and stuff. And she yeah. said that she just called, she just Googled like powerlifting gyms or whatever, found Kenmore barbell and just mm -hmm. called the gym. And yeah, I guess so you answered. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Um, I think I actually, it was her mom who had called. Okay. Um, uh, and I didn't answer because I didn't recognize the number. Okay. But I, I usually, when that's the case, I usually just send out a text. Um, mm -hmm. You know, hey, it's so-and-so from, from Kenmore, you know, Barbell, how can I help you? Um, and then she mentioned who she was and I gave her a call back right away. And we talked and I'm like, yeah, just bring her by and, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at things and, you know, this and that. And so the first day she's there, it's like, I think a Saturday morning, I want to say. Um, and I'm mind you, this was like almost two years ago now. So yeah, yeah. He's not perfect, but, um, and we just kind of went over each lift really quick and she squatted well, uh, like, but then she benched and she's like, yeah, I can bench like 195. I'm like, okay and there's there's like in my head i'm like there's no so <laughs> she did it she showed me and i'm like holy christ like now it wasn't great powerlifting technique style bench but mm -hmm. 195 to 195 you're just like this girl's got a lot of potential yeah um so then we you know we went on with the process and we joy and i then had like a quick like 30 minute call or so the next day or sometime the following week um just kind of going over things and and that's kind of when she's like, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to be an influencer. I want to do this. I want to do that. And like, okay, like, let's just kind of focus on the powerlifting for now. But, you know, yeah. those things can come as, as time goes on. And then, you know, we already started training and got her competing. I think it was like end of April was her first, it was like the uh, anniversary of her first meet. So she's only been competing for like a year now. Like mm -hmm. it hasn't been that long. Um, but she just comes from a, that gymnastics background. Right. So she's yeah. had fun of, she's just developed a lot of strength there. She had a couple of years or so, at least a year or so of her own in the gym, just kind of doing things and finding a, a new passion, you know, after mm -hmm. everything that happened with gymnastics and, and now she's just, now she just loves powerlifting. So it just, yeah, it was just one of those things we got started and, you know, I didn't think it would get to this point this soon. Um, but I yeah. knew she had the potential for it. Um, so it was after her first competition, actually, I was looking at the PA roster and I'm like, ah, there's no one there. Um, let me see if she'd be interested. And so I asked her and like, she didn't even hesitate. So again, that wasn't really in the plans though. So mm -hmm. going into that, we had like, I think seven or eight weeks to prepare for it, um, after just competing. So I'm like, all right, there's not really much more we're going to get out of her. It might add like five kilos to her total. Um, and then we went and, you know, the rest is kind of just been history since yeah man it's been a meteoric rise i mean i love this you sort of like the origin story of like you know you made a call and it was funny because um i was on on her episode i'm just like well thank god vin answered that phone call like it didn't just go yeah. straight to voicemail and then now you're like no i sent it straight no, to I, I didn't because i don't i don't i don't answer a lot of calls i don't recognize and you know i just no let business. it go to voicemail and half the time nine times out of ten it's just spam calls and nonsense so waste of my time I mean, as, as I, a business owner myself, you know, I got a publicly listed number, you get a shit ton of weird calls and stuff yep. like I, I, I definitely screen all my calls as well. Yep. Um, so, but it's cool that, you know, you hit them back right away. And it just, just to think like, you could have easily, I mean, you, you're a busy guy, like, the, you know, yep. like you, you got a lot of ambition, you got a lot of things, irons in the fire. So it's like, you could have easily just let that fall and who knows where yeah. she would be now. Yeah, if you you could have fallen through the cracks and um, she yeah. may have still found the sport, but uh you know i'm glad it you know i'm glad it's worked out as it has and yeah. um she's got man she's got the potential to be really really special in the sport she's just gotta stick around long enough and stay healthy of course and just you know just just stay the course just in general and how do you think like her gymnastics background like prepared her like mentally um you know because because i mean like you're saying these long-term um, time horizons here for, for being patient. And it's, she's at an age where patience is not something that most no. 18 year olds have. Right. No. So, um, but I think having that gymnastics and that Olympic sort of aspiration and stuff makes her a little different. Yeah, for sure. I mean, she, she was a high level gymnast. Like she was, I mean, I think she was like a level nine, I believe. And I'm sure she would have committed D1 somewhere for gymnastics. Um, but being that, high level and that competitive, I mean, you just develop a lot of mental strength 
um, and of course, physical strength too. But yeah, and I think in a sport like powerlifting, once you get to a certain level, it just becomes more mental. Um, like she's strong enough to to lift just about anything I throw on the bar. Um, a lot of it has been, you know, at least recently, just kind of working on the mental side, mm-hmm. um, and just you know, like especially with squats, three hundred and fifteen, like that was just a mental game for a while, and now it's now it's just like it's literally a warm up for her at times. Mm-hmm. Um, half the time we don't even use it to warm up. But, um, but yeah, just her background in general with that, I think it just, it just makes her a competitor. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's, you know, I, I can't speak for her 100% on this, but I, I would imagine it's like you lose something you were so passionate about and you felt like you could have gone to a high level with it and you, you find something, you know, somewhat similar. Yeah. That team aspect of a sport, but where it's very, very individual at its core. And she's just got that, that competitiveness that she will, set goals and she will achieve them and i think that's something gymnastics has taught her and something she's carried over into powerlifting Mm -hmm. so it just makes her a very um it's an advantage for her for sure and it just makes her very difficult to beat on meet day because Mm -hmm. she's she's gonna lock in and she's just gonna show up and she's gonna compete and you know she's probably been in competitions and gymnastics where she's been pushed to her limits And, you know, there's probably been instances where she's pushed others to theirs. And Mm -hmm. that's just, you can't teach that. She just has it. And she has a lot of the intangibles you can't really teach. And she's just hungry and she just wants to be great. And so part of my job is just making sure we do that at at an appropriate pace. So she doesn't get injured. She doesn't get too much in her head. She doesn't try to force too much. And that was stuff we had to work on in the beginning. Like she was very you know, she, it's not that she wouldn't follow the program or anything or follow my advice. It's just, she just wanted more and more and more. Yeah. And, you know, it works to a certain point, but then it catches up. And this prep, we just really honed in on that. And we just said, Hey, listen, like we have to take things a little slower in the beginning. We have to prime the body. We have to build that foundation. Right. And oh. let it just, let it just come, let, let the progress come to you. Don't chase it. And I mean, it's just made a, a, a big difference for her. Um, as you can tell, like she yeah. just took that step that I expected her to take. And, you know, there's obviously plenty more left oh, for definitely. Her to, to achieve. Well, I mean, I think it's just, um, you know, it's a real testament to yourself, just that, um, I mean, obviously, Joy is amazing. She puts in the work, she does all the, you know, all the things. But um, from the coaching side of things, like I said, I mean, 18 year olds are extremely impatient and you see it all over the place where juniors yeah. come in, they, br- they burn super bright and then they burn out, you know? And yeah. it's like, because oftentimes at 18 years old, oftentimes they're like self-coached or they got like a friend or someone that's coaching. They don't have like a serious, like professional coach like you um, yeah. to kind of pull those reins back in and give them that mindset of like, look, this is a long game. You've said it now, like two or three times on this podcast. If she stays in the sport long enough, the sky's the limit. Right. And that's the only yeah. question. Exactly. Is- Exactly. keep her healthy and keep her going for long enough. She's going to be on that Sheffield stage. Right. Right. Cause she could be one of those lifters that excels early. I mean, she already is, but, yeah. but then burns out quickly. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't, I don't want that for her, but no. you know, and then you have the lifters who, you know, they develop a bit slower and in, in some cases she has, um, but the slow progress, I mean, it just, it adds up over time. If you can just pace yourself, it doesn't really matter who you are. If you're, if you're committed to it, you'll find a way. Um, some will just excel faster at a more steady rate. Um, but anyone really, I mean, that wants to put the time and effort in and commit to it and can get to a high level. Um, they just have to want to do that. So, and I know she does. So now for her, it's just honing in everything and, and just, you know, making sure we're focusing on every, every little aspect of things outside of the gym as well, which mm-hmm. she does. And that's made a huge difference. Yeah, man. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it's such a great story and it's, um, it's a superstar story, you know, and it's a rise from the bottom up story. And it's just, it's a very inspiring for anyone out there that's been following along. It's very inspiring that like, and, and especially to hear you even say like that, she told you from day one that she wanted to be an influencer and yeah. now she is, you know, and like she yeah, legitimately yeah. is now. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, she's just a person that's goal driven and just sets those goals and just tears them down. Exactly. And that's, uh, that's just something about her. Like she'll set a goal 
Um, she even set goals for this prep that at the time I looked at them like, wow, those look, those look a little unrealistic right now. Right. But just because where we were and I'm like, wow, in 15 weeks, you want to do that. And she's accomplished that. Um, yeah. now she wasn't successful on all of them, but she put herself in a position to attempt them. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just as, just as great. And I mean, just having that goal, that overreaching goal, I mean, I gave her something to work towards. So yeah. in the meantime, we had to focus on, okay, we got to find smaller goals in between so that we're not too fixated on that big, big number, um, because it may not be attainable at the end of each block. We have to work towards it. For sure. For sure. So yeah, man, um, it's a great story. I, I can't wait to see where it goes. I feel like we're just like in like the opening chapter of it, to be honest. Yeah. And it's already like, it's like one of those books where it's like, it's already got you hooked and you just want to read it all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm excited to be along with the journey and stuff. I've had the privilege of, of being around, you know, for uh, Joyce competition in Orlando and in Buffalo and stuff and just seeing everything. And um, it's amazing. So it's a movie. It's a movie. Like there'll be, yeah, a, there'll be a Netflix, really there'll be a Netflix movie or something about this one day. Right. Yeah, there might be, there might be. So, um, all right, let's talk about junior worlds 2022. So, um, tell us a little bit of like, you know, how you got involved with going over to Turkey last year and then, um, you know, what happened from there? Yeah. So I had, uh, I kind of touched on it with joy. Yeah. Um, she competed and, uh, I proposed the idea and she said yes, um, to go into national at least. And then Clark as well. Um, so we just went. And we both ended up winning. Uh, both Clark and Joy won their weight classes and took their invites. And then we just went out to Turkey. Um, we weren't really sure what to expect. We weren't just expecting to go. Um, we honestly weren't even sure what the selection criteria was. I don't think they really announced anything. Yeah. Um, it was a little. Yeah. But it was all happening so fast. So it yeah, is yeah. what it is. Um, we're building this no, plane as we're taking off. Yeah, ultimately they made the team and we went out to Turkey. We had we had a blast. Uh, it was just a fun experience. Um, now I've coached internationally before, but it was at the uh, NAPF level. So that was my first like IPF world level type of uh, event. And okay. so, you know, I knew going in, it was going to be, you know, it was going to be higher stakes. It was going to be just a little bit more competitive um, and all of that. And just, it lived up to it. Like it was fun. Um, Joy placed second. She finished with a, a gold medal in bench. Um, and of course, at the time, held the world record in bench uh, with that that just, you know, unprecedented battle with her and uh, Kaja. Um, something you probably, you won't probably see that very often, I don't think. No. Um, with six attempts being, you know, world record attempts. Um, and then, of course, Joy, like, opening with the world record, which was, like, I told her from the start i'm like that's what we're gonna do mm -hmm. um and she's like okay like she i think she was probably you know ready to soil herself but she agreed to it <laughs> um but we did it and you know it's funny i mentioned too like she had a bad bench day that day even though we finished with gold and left with a world record she just was not having a good bench day and people will probably think i'm crazy but it's just it's just the truth yeah um but then with clark like he took second or third, sorry, third in his, um, a lot of like the, I remember the one thing he said, he's like, wow, everyone can actually squat here. You know, you go to meets and some people just don't know how to squat or they're mm -hmm. just they don't know how to select attempts. Um, and so, yeah, we, I mean, we went three for three. I think Clark went nine for nine that day. Um, and I think the one notable thing for him was his 20 kilo jump on his, uh, his deadlift attempt first to second. Um, he's just like, I'm, I, I have it. I'm like, okay. So it kind of put us right in the position to just kind of pace ourselves into a podium spot. Um, but we had a competitor from Italy who like, just, I couldn't get a grasp on him. Like every time we put in an attempt, he'd go two and a half higher, but I didn't know where his limit was. Um, and, you know, with Clark, you know, we knew his limit, but he had more in the day, but you just, you know, unfortunately sometimes you find out the hard way. Yeah. Um, but either way, they both finished on the podium and, uh just it was just fun being away different country powerlifting um representing your country um yeah so, i mean they had a blast and of course joy's hooked um you know clark's still competing but he's just doing his own thing now yeah um, and then uh yeah then we got to the banquet and that's when um john kind of approached me and asked if i wanted to take a coaching position next year 
um because i you know aside from clark and joy I helped out with uh anthony helped out with yaya um and the results from those two event those two competitors like that kind of fueled me to want to come back as well because i was yeah just, so that's that's what I wanted to get into was like, yeah. um, cause we know, you know, you went with joy and Clark, they were both sub juniors. They're both sub junior yep. national champions. Um, actually we talked about it a lot on the, on joy's episode of, of the PA podcast where, um, you know, actually the attempt selection that Kaja made, uh, on bench ended up kind of biting her because, mm -hmm. um, she went from 100 to 105 and missed it twice. Right. And right. Joy took the, the, the world record, uh, 96 kilos, then 101, and then 103 and you know katra opened 100 kilos so you just yeah. chipped it you just kind of chipped it 101 yeah well i kind of had a i had a feeling like i knew where joy was going to open and i had a feeling katra would open heavier just because she's she at the time had a stronger bench yeah and i'm like all right let's just chip the world record or well, whatever katra puts on we'll, we'll put in at least a half kilo more yeah um and quite, actually, quite frankly, her first attempt, Kaja's, I, I think there was some up and down that was subtle that got mm -hmm. missed. And of course, like it, it was hard to tell on the replay or just the screen in the back. So it was like, wasn't like it's one of those ones where you're running right to the, th to the jury to, to get it, you know, looked at again. So there was a chance she could have bombed um, had we kind of caught it, but, you know, some mm -hmm. things go missed. And, but yeah. it is what it is. Um, you can't fix it now. But no, that just bench battle was just, that was fun. Like you just had two girls just going, you know, six attempts, all world record attempts, uh, right from the start, like just exciting. Like you're not going to see that very often. No. But I mean, it's also just like, it's, a, it's again, a testament to yourself. I mean, as far as playing the, the game, right? Because after you hit 96 and she takes 100, okay, why not take 100.5? Why not take a chip? Why not, you know, do some, like, that's a little bit of a weird number to take. Uh, obviously she was confident she, she was going to take 105 next, but right. still that's a mistake. Like you, you, she, she, she should have taken, you know, 99.5 or 100.5. Some, um, right? I guess it's just Poland's thing. They don't like to chip anything. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They don't um, like, I don't to know chip. what it is, but they don't. Um, and even with joy, like I just, we knew she's good for five kilo jumps um she's good on like a seven and a half kilo jump to be honest on bench like that's just where her bench is at um but if we don't have to do that we're not going to do that and i'm you know we didn't have to i'm glad we didn't do it because you know we took a jump to 103 and it just just wasn't there um yeah. pauses were long but they were justified um she was a little shaky in her bottom position so she just couldn't get that bar motionless in time and that will definitely uh impact some things but it's improved now and she definitely won't have that problem, you know, in a week. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, even just like taking, you're saying five kilo jumps, like, but it's, you start at 96, then 101, like that's, uh, it's, it's just obvious when you look at the numbers, like that, um, you know, she, it could have been that Katra could have came out and done 101.5 on her second and took, walked away with that gold medal on bench and, you know, whatever the rest is history. But I mean, just for people listening out there, it's like, this is why it's really important that you have a coach like Vin in your corner, you know, like, like it knows the strategy here because it's not just about who's the best bencher here. Like if you look, Kaja went and broke the world record later at euros. Um, like yes. she's, she's a very formidable bencher equally right there with joy. They're both crazy, ridiculous outliers. Um, and, but it, you could argue that, that Kaja was the stronger bencher on the day and she walked away with the silver medal um, exactly. because and you put the right attempts in. Yeah. And that's kind of what I said earlier. Like you just, yep. it's the day that matters. I mean, numbers don't really, um, yep. they only matter at the end, you know, and, and yep. what you're able to do on the platform. Uh, and that's the thing too, with any, anything, like you just look at like even totals going into nationals and the nominations for worlds and stuff, like you got to have it, you got to do something to kind of set up the, the, the event, but it doesn't matter. Like you just, yeah. you know, you, you're going to anticipate lifters be coming in stronger. Um, they might even be coming in injured to some extent. Uh, you just don't know. So point being is don't get too caught up in what you see on paper. You just have to show up and compete on the day and just let whatever happens happen. And, and bring a real game day coach, man. I mean, I can't stress it enough. Like, I mean, this is, it's, it's like, 
Um, you know, you could be, have all the strength in the world. You come in and, and you put the wrong numbers on the bar and stuff. Right. Like, and, exactly. and you're doomed. You're going to get schooled by someone like Vin. Yeah. So, um, you may come to that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's talk about the one Oh fives though, the junior, uh, Anthony McNaughton. Um, yeah. so just tell us a little bit of backstory. You kind of got roped in, you know, um, I think, you know, you you were handling Clark and joy, amazingly yep. successful. They missed like one lift between them. Um, yeah. and then, and then you, you get, you, you get the call from Anthony, like, Hey, yo, I wanted you to handle me on the day. Yeah. I uh, think I actually, I think John song had reached out prior to me getting there and just asking if I would, you know, help out with Anthony. I don't remember, remember exactly what happened, but all I know yeah. is, you know, I was asked to help Anthony out and, you know, the night before we kind of met up and just kind of went over the game plan and, you know, just, just had a, a plan going in. Um, then of course you get to the day and, and this is again, exactly what I mean. Like you just, you don't know what's going to happen and warmups were going well, he was squatting well. Um, and then it's just, you know, got out to the platform and just couldn't, couldn't get to depth. I mean, it looked deep enough. Right. But yeah, judging at that level is much stricter. And um, we just couldn't, we couldn't get our squat. Uh, fortunately we got our third, but we had to take our opener three times. And so that we probably left, I'd want to say at least 15 kilos on squat, mm -hmm. um, which kind of put us behind a little bit. Um, and then of course we kind of made it back on bench. Kids got a ridiculous bench wow. and, uh, you know, and then deadlifts, it just was going to come down to, you know, whether or not Coco was having a day or not. And he, he, he had a perfect day. He showed up, he competed, he made his lifts yeah. and he made it difficult for us to win. And, you know, hats off to him. That's, he just, he performed. Um, and it's not to say Anthony didn't, he did very well as well. He turned it around after the squats and he stayed in the game. And that's a testament to him as well. Like if he, if he couldn't shake off those squats and move forward, he would have had a much harder time even being in a position to pull for the win. So, um, and then, but that, that, that one hurt a little bit, right? Like we just, we knew we could win if all went well. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just didn't. And, you know, it's been a, a sour taste in my mouth. I'm sure it's been a sour taste in his. And, you know, we, we have plans to avenge that this year. Like that's, that is one reason why I took the position um, is because I want to go back and, and win with Anthony because I knew we could have done it that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, I mean, it's, it was, it was a crazy, I mean, it was a crazy situation to miss your opening squat and then miss it again. And then you have to come out and make it on your third, but hats off. Like he, he persevered, he made it through the adversity and, mm -hmm. you know, finished off strong and still put pressure uh, after bench and stuff. I mean, I remember thinking like, shit, this is over after squats. And then no, after bench, it was like, well, let's see, because Coco's missed a lot of lifts in the past, mm -hmm. but you know, like you said, Coco yeah. performed, but well, that's um, the thing. It's, uh, it's never over till it's over. As long as you're still in the game and you, you, you got the right mindset and you, you're, you're still in it anything can happen so again again hats off to anthony for just mentally just being able to stay in the game um and just perform and he no. gave himself an opportunity to, to still win and it just wasn't there yeah um i had anthony on the pa podcast as well so you know shout out go go listen to that episode he talks about this a lot he talks mm -hmm. about how coco's like living in his mind now and like how how he cannot wait to get back and either go head to head and beat coco or beat whoever france is sending but how yep. is the vibe because then you also had yaya in the 120s um who ended up taking a, a silver medal to nicholas Peyro, um mm -hmm. also from france and so like how is the little rivalry we got here going with these on the junior men's team against usa and france yeah, well, I mean, I think it's one of the more notable rivalries just in powerlifting in general. Um, and they just, dude, they just have shooters, man. They just, it doesn't matter who they send. Like any of them are a contender. It doesn't matter. Women's, men's, doesn't matter. Like any of them can win on any day. Um, and it just, again, it just came down to to them hitting their lifts and just performing. And Yaya had a great day. It just, we just fell short. Um, but, but yeah, those two performances in general, like those were, you know, and, and not to, you know, overlook, you know, being there with Clark and Joy, but, you know, those were great too. But like losing to France, like that just, there was just a little, you know, you, you wanted to come back and beat them. And that was definitely one of the motivating factors for me to, to take the position, you know, once I sorted out some logistics here, you know, back home and figuring out what I can do, what I can't in terms of coaching and all of yeah. that. So, um, 
but yeah, the rivalry is great. And I hope, I hope it's still up to uh, lives up to its name in, in Romania. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm super excited for that, man. You, you, you were right there in the trenches in one of the most pivotal parts of all of junior worlds. And part of this rivalry between team USA and team France um, stem will be stemming like, cause these guys are going to be in the open. I mean, like we yeah. saw, we saw Anthony come out to Buffalo in January and yeah. throw down a ridiculous total. That would be extremely competitive. Um, everyone was talking, he should have, he should go to nationals and he could hit the qualifying total to make it on the open team. And he talked about it on the PA podcast, you know, um, you go back and listen to that. Like, you know, he didn't want to do it for a lot of different reasons, all of them being sort of like the fact that he's just a super uh, ethical, high, high level dude that is like, you know, doesn't want to take like an easy win or anything like that. And he wanted to go back and avenge himself at junior worlds. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's now, you know, they're competitive on the open uh, team as well. And we're going to see these guys battling. So Coco and uh and anthony like this is going to be a battle for the ages i think yeah. so I'm, I'm, i hope I'm, so i hope so i mean it's it's got all the the, the writing on the wall to do that um yeah. you see what happens on that day but yeah yeah I'm, I'm confident in anthony right now his training's going well um i i talk about him like i'm his personal coach but i'm not i just uh you know john's doing a great doing great work with him um and i know anthony's got just he 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 is living in Coco's mine, I'm sure, a little bit as well. Yeah. Vice versa. And uh I know, I know he just wants to win. I know he wants to avenge himself on that platform. And, you know, and I think we'll do just that. But we just, you know, we got to take care of nationals first and then get to worlds. Yeah. Yeah. It must be exciting. It must be cool to have, like you said, um, you know, you're not his personal coach, but you're gonna be coaching him at worlds. You were in yeah. the trenches with him there. You go through these battles. Um, you make these friendships and then like, you know, you follow along, like we all do, like I, I'm a you know fan of the sport and right. you see this heartbreaking thing happen to Anthony, but then you see the redemption arc happen. Buffalo mm -hmm. throws down a massive number there. And then we're about to see him absolutely ball out uh, in a week from now at Scott's in Scottsdale probably might have the whole, biggest total of the entire competition as a one Oh five. So um, that's, that's going to be, you know, something to watch for something to for sure, you know, get excited about. Um, so since then, You've been named uh, U.S. national team coach uh, for the juniors and sub juniors. What all has that entailed? You know, like like after Turkey um, up, up until this point, uh, there hasn't been really too much up until recently. Um, you know, we've had a few meetings uh, just to kind of go over some stuff and kind of lay the foundation of things and and really iron out selection process stuff and and get that all situated in a you know. A, appropriate amount of time for the athletes to understand like what's going on, what to expect, you know, how you can qualify and be selected. Um, and so, but now it's, it's ramping up a little bit because yeah. we, you know, we had, uh, you know, high school nationals wasn't too long ago. Um, you had uh, university nationals recently. And then of course you had some of our, you know, age division lifters competing at the opens. Um, so yeah. they're, you know, you know, we had essentially four meets that you can qualify from. Um, and now, you know, the, the, the last one to do that for is a week away. So, yeah. um, and then everything's going to ramp up and everything's yeah. just going to really kind of, it's going to be a little chaotic for a couple of days, um, sending out invites and, and just getting things situated and, um, you know, but that's, that's, that's the fun part, right? Like, yeah, this is like kind of what we've been all kind of waiting for. Um, all the foundations been laid. Uh, we have a, a reasonable idea of who's going to be on the team already. Um, but there's still a lot of spots to fill because uh, these age division lifters are, are pretty strong. So, um, yeah. but again, you don't know who can accept and go and who can't. And so, you know, you don't want to get too excited yet because, you know, a, a lifter you're looking forward to having on the team may, may break your heart and tell you they can't go. So yeah. um, you just, you just wait, let the, let the pieces fall. Um, and then you kind of compile all the results and, and go from there. So. But yeah, yeah I mean, it's only getting exciting. Um, it was kind of just like, you know, after getting asked and making taking time to make the decision. I think I waited until like almost the end of the year last yeah. year to, to decide. Um, and then, you know, to now see it all kind of coming together and, you know, and then I'll, of course, be going to Cayman as well for uh, NAPF. I guess I'm head coaching that um, with Tom and I believe John's going to be there as well. So uh, I'll get a little more experience there. And then, 
you know, we fly out to Romania shortly after that. Yeah. Um, so just, I mean, tell us a little bit, like we call, we call it the U S national teams, you know, mm -hmm. plural, because it isn't just one U S national team. So what are the two, you know, spots that people are competing for? We have the NAPF, which is the North American uh, team. And then you have the world level team, which is the one I think everyone chases. Um, mm -hmm. It's the most prestigious. Um, some people will opt for the NAPF because typically it's the location of the event itself is a little bit more fun. Um, but yeah, everyone chases that world level. I mean, everyone that's in this, these, these national level meets are typically there because they want to be on these teams. Um, that's kind of the, the entire idea of the Federation right now is to yeah. provide that opportunity again. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, you have your world level team and then you have your, your, your North American, which is basically how we want to do it. And it, it was never kind of done this way in the past. Um, it never really got attention really. Um, and the way we want to create, we, we want to create like a farm system in a way yeah. and like use the NAPF system as a, as a way to develop some lifters and get them on the world level teams. Um, even if they experience that world level once, um, mm -hmm. we want to use the NAPF teams as a, a developmental system to, to get them there. And that's something we're, we're working on. And, yeah. and that's why we're, you know, we've created a selection process that's a little bit more involved, if you will, uh, to, mm -hmm. to do that because we want to, we want to have strong NAPF teams. And of course we want to bring the strongest team possible to the world level. So, you know, the selection criteria was kind of built out for that reason, you know, the way we did it. Yeah. So, um, the North American regional championships, um, it's under the North American power team federation, which is the regional affiliate of the IPF. So this mm -hmm. is an IPF platform. Um, for people that are, you know, are probably familiar with Euros, which is like a massive event. It's one of the best competitions in the entire world, right? And they don't even, some people don't even realize that we have our own regional IPF competition, which is called the North American Power Team Championships under the NAPF. And it should be a much bigger deal than it has been in the past. And yeah. um, so that is a big thing for us. It's a major focus because you know, when you go and you compete at nationals and now as a depth starts to get really stacked in all these weight classes, I mean, there, you could, you could ball out at nationals and not make the world's team. And so right. we want to have another option for you to go compete internationally, go break world right. records exactly. and um, get that IPF level experience. Like you're saying with IPF level referees and pressure and the whole vibe of, of representing your country, create more opportunities for people to represent their country. Um, and that's what North Americans is and what, what it will be. And, and we've got some bosses. I mean, Ray Williams is going to go. Mike T yep, is going to yep. go. There's a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty hefty open team. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, so it'll be, it'll be fun. And, but you know, you, like you said, like the NAPF, when I went, I think it was like 2018, 2019, I don't know. It was in Costa Rica. I just remember that. Yeah. I didn't even know what the hell it was. Like yeah. it was never really advertised. It was never, you know, even talked about, um, so I didn't even know really what it was, but, but yeah. now again, like I said, we're, we're trying to change that and, and really make it, you know, something worthwhile and, and give people that platform and use it, you know, especially with the age division folks, like use it as a developmental system to, to help them get to that next level that they, you know, they so wish. So, yeah. um, but that's the, you know, it's just got to start and that's kind of, this is kind of the beginning of that. Absolutely. All right. So let's get into how you make it onto these teams. So let's bust open. Um, so for people that are listening, I'll put the link in the description as well. And I'll go back and do it on the previous episode, uh, the juniors preview show as well, because I forgot to do that. But um, under um, if you go to powerteam-america.com and you click on um, at the top, if you click on athletes and then you click on national teams, there's a, a sidebar there, which has all of our different national teams and you can click it and you'll see all the different qualifying criteria. It's all laid out there. So for the one, for the juniors and sub juniors, let's go through that one. Since we got you on here with the, as a U.S. national team coach. Sure. Do you want to start with the primary? Yeah, let's, let's start go. with the primary and let's talk about the previous, uh, you know, what competitions can qualify you, uh, okay. for it yeah. That. So primary wise, um, the upcoming event in Arizona is a qualifier. Um, University Nationals was a qualifier and high school nationals. Um, what we're looking for there is we will be ranking top nine by GL, uh, male and female. Um, and then we then have to look at who's in that top nine ranking. And if they've won their weight class, they will receive an automatic bid to the team. Now you might have 
uh, a few, let's say, I don't know, in the more popular weight classes, the, the, the more stacked ones, you might have a few 83s in there. You might have a few 63s in that top nine ranking. Mm -hmm. um, but if they didn't win, and that's kind of what sets it apart is winning is the key. Um, and of course, having a high GL. Um, if you don't win, it, it makes it a little bit harder to get that that primary. Um, but from there, uh, it doesn't mean you don't have a chance at all. From there, you just kind of get tossed into the secondary pool, which um, we removed the GL point ranking there and we've used a Carpino. Um, and for people who don't know what that is, in short, it's just a it's a way to rank you based on your total and where you would place, you know, from past, I believe the past three years, yeah. you know, on average where you would place. Um, so for example, like a Carpino one would indicate you would win more than likely. Uh, but if you have a Carpino one, you're probably already getting an automatic bid. So most of these Carpinos are like five and below is what it's looking like for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. and then from there, you know, your, your, your top ranked Carpinos are going to get their invites first and we'll use that pool of lifters to start filling out the roster in terms of the, uh, alternate or secondary selections, if you will. Okay. So real quick. So, so the Carpino, um, basically what they do is they'll take your total, they'll go and look and they'll see, okay, this total, if you did this at worlds, the last three years, you would have finished, let's say first, second, and third, for instance, that's an average. Then you take that average over the last three years. So that's an average of a two, right? And so you, your Carpino score will be a two, and then you're just going to straight rank order them based on the Carpino and and then fill in the, the remaining spots on the team based on whatever open spots there are um, left over after the primary selection, which is biggest total in your weight class at these three competitions, top nine IPF uh, GL points. Right. Exactly. Right. Okay. All right. So, um, I've got up on the screen, you know, people are, if, if they're watching on YouTube, we'll, we'll talk, we'll try to talk through this because we're mostly an audio podcast, but, um, you know, you can kind of see what he was talking about here, where you might have two people in, in a certain weight class. You, know, you might have two people in this weight class. You can see here just as, just as an example here. All right. Yep. Um, and then talking ranking by, uh, IPF good lift points. That's this right here. And so we've mentioned in the past that, uh, Vin, Vin mentioned before now, now here we're, we're on junior women here. Okay. So these, these are the juniors. Not a lot of them have competed yet. This competition coming up in a week, this is when the, the big shooters from the juniors are going to be coming out. So you'll see that we have Jessica and Carolyn at the top here with IPF scores above a 90 and that those two both did that at open nationals. Right. And then from there, we see there's a little bit of a fall off down to 74 here, to, uh, 74 IPF geo points. There's probably going to be a, a lot of lifters at in Scottsdale. Um, like we're talking in the 63s, you know, we're talking a lot of different weight classes, like the 84 pluses um, with, with Luella and with um, <clears throat> Chelsea, you know, that there's going to be some 90s thrown down yeah. uh, that are going to slip, that are going to slip in here. Right. So um, so that's what we're kind of talking about as far as like the rankings and everything like that. Then when I scroll over secondary selection here, these are the Carpino scores. All right. Mm -hmm. So you can see Jessica, um, who competed at open nationals. She's obviously an amazing lifter going to go to open worlds and ball out, get a dub for team USA. And you know, her score that she threw down at open nationals would be good for first place at junior worlds the last three years. That's what that one means. Then from there, you know, we got a bunch of 84 pluses. Only two of them can make it on the team. So that's why you see when we scroll over here, there's only two here. So then these other two, um, when we're looking at Carpino score, um, they're going to have to make it onto the NAPF team. And then Carolyn Connor would get the next next spot available. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, yep. and that's so it, gets, see. it gets a little confusing because of, you know, again, it just depends how many you'll have in each weight class. Um, yep. And, you know, we want each weight class to be represented at Worlds and even the NAPFs. Um, so it, it does make it a little more challenging for some of those alternate spots, especially now with there being more lifters coming to nationals. Um, but ultimately, you know, John and I, we want to bring the strongest team possible, the team that not only is going to, you know, place well, but, you know, there is a, a team aspect to this as well. And there are team points to earn and there is a team placing overall um so we want to we just want to do well everywhere um and the way we've laid out the selection process for this year is i wouldn't say it's perfect but i mean it's very hard to to formulate something 
perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it makes sense. Um, you know, you, you're encouraging lifters. I mean, winning matters, right? You got to win. Um, and with that, you're, you know, of course, you're going to have some lifters. Like it's, in the 63s, you're probably going to see a few girls in there in yeah. that top nine, um, like in the high 90s. Uh, I know Joy is like somewhere between 95, 98, depending on where she finishes. Um, and, you know, total wise. And then, you know, but I think her, I think her Carpino right now is probably like around a five or so, but yeah. I don't know. That's, um, that's the thing about Carpino is like, so, so even if she has a super high GL points, if she's not first place in her weight class across these three meets, then it doesn't matter what her GL points are. It, it will go to her Carpino score next. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and the reason that is, is because we want to fill in those spots into positions where they can go and medal at worlds to collect team points for team USA. And so that's where you'll see, it might be a little bit different. Like, so for instance, like we talk, Carolyn Connor's got a 91. That's a hella good GL score. But if we come over here, the 69 weight class that she's in is super stacked. So that's only a seven on a Carpino because the 69s are ballers all around the world. And so that's where that's giving you a little bit more of like where you stack up against the competition that you'll actually be facing at Worlds. Yep, yep, yeah. And Carolyn's going to do well enough at Nationals where she should win yep. um, and earn the the automatic but yep they said it's got to get done first before anything's set in stone um but she's been having a good a good uh good stretch of training as well so she should yeah. be okay yeah for sure so just to show a couple of these um you know El elaney luella and chelsea here all in the upper 80s jessica haggerty man she balled out at high school nationals um, really splash onto the scene. I can't wait to see these four here that are the top, especially, you know, Ava Polini also a double threat and equipped and, and yep. in classic. So um, these are the sub juniors. So I'll be posting all this information. I, I, we've got uh, standings up. I will update them. These are the most recent ones I'm showing you here. I'll also update the, the website with this information here. So it kind of has everyone ranked by uh, IPF good lift points and have everything ranked by uh, Carpino scores as well. Look at these Carpino scores on the juniors, super high, a lot of stuff in the ones. And that's yeah. because the, these are the sub juniors. I'm sorry. That's because yeah. a lot more sub juniors have already competed at high school nationals. So the talent pool on the sub juniors, they've already thrown down in high school nationals and put up big numbers. Um, and so some of these are coming back for more though, like Chelsea Luella did this at open nationals where she won the 84 plus in the open division. Um, yeah. But, um, but you, uh, you know, they're coming back to throw down again in Scottsdale. So that's going to be a massive epic battle. Um, but yeah, we'll throw all this up on the website. So you have a list of IPF good lift points and everything. So if you're, if you're wondering like what kind of good lift score do I need to get into the top nine, that information will all be there. So you'll know what to put on the bar, uh, for your final attempts. Exactly. So, so, um, I guess my advice to any lifter really is just, just put together the best performance you can as a lifter. Um, don't get too caught up in this team selection stuff because none of it is guaranteed. None of it is set in stone. Um, there's a lot of obstacles and, you know, we're going to, we're going to have to deal with all that in terms of like who can't go, uh, you know, who declines or whatever reason. Um, so put together the best, uh, performance you can and give yourself a chance to get an invite and you might surprise yourself and, and receive one. So, um, just just do the best you can do. And that's, that's really it. Yeah. I mean, that's the nice thing about the, the formula and everything that you guys have created. It's a, we saw the same thing at open nationals um, with having to hit a qual a super high qualifying Carpino one total. Um, it really makes it so that you got to ball out. I mean, you do, you got to show up and, and put up the biggest number that you can. And exactly. especially there's not a lot of gamesmanship to be played because if you're lifting on day one in Scottsdale, someone could come in and put up a bigger GL points in, in day two. So mm -hmm. you're not, you know, you don't want to really make decisions just specifically on that. You want to get the biggest total you can get. Yeah. Just lift, just lift weights, yeah. make your attempts and, and do your best to not leave too many kilos, you know, yeah. get all the kilos you can without, without, you know, without missing. Right. So mm -hmm. That'll give you the best chance to potentially get an invite if you're, you know, kind of on the fence right now. Absolutely. So um, let's then just briefly talk about how the NAPF. So, so we went over primary selection, 
good lift points, top nine, win your weight class across these three competitions, secondary selection, rank order by Carpino to fill in the remaining world's team spots. And then we go to NAPF. How do we, how is that team selected? Uh, it's then it just becomes another GL ranking, um, top nine women, top nine men, uh, will get their invites first. Um, so again, the GL is a bit more of a reflection of your strength and kind of where I guess we, you know, it, it kind of sets you apart in terms of like where you are strength wise and, and where, you know, we, we just, it gives us an opportunity to just build a strong team. Um, how, how good of a performance you had too, right? GL really right, indicates right. that as well. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so just, and that kind of comes back to where I said, just put together your best total because your GL point is a reflection of your total. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, so top nine women, top nine men get their invites. And then of course, I'm sure we'll have some people decline and all of that. So, um, but as I said earlier, like we're utilizing and we want to use this NAPF team and whatnot as a farm system essentially to help develop lifters. So um, just because you maybe aren't there yet to get your world team invite, um, you know, don't, don't scoff at an NAPF invite. Like if it, if you can go and, you know, take the opportunity, gain some experience and just see, see what happens because mm -hmm. it's still, it's still fun. It's still international lifting. You're still able to represent the country. Um, and, and yeah, so, I mean, it sucks if you fall short of the goal and you wanted the world team, but there's a lot of lifters and it's a higher level of lifting and we want to bring the strongest team we can. So, and we want to do the same at the other level. And so don't, you know, don't scoff at it. We're going to, we're going to bring strong teams and just, just do the best you can and just make yeah. the most of it. And if there's an opportunity you can go, just go. Totally. Yeah. I mean, you get the team USA singlet. I mean, it is, it is, I mean, it's it, this NAPF, it may at this moment, people are first hearing about it, whatever they may not seem like, but this will become a very big deal. This being on the NAPF team um, is definitely going to be something that is something to be proud of. Yeah. For sure. At least that's our goal. It's something we want. It, it, again, like it wasn't something that was ever really talked about in the past. And um, for what reason, I don't know, but yeah. I think it was just the world team was just not the team. Um, mm -hmm. But if you do it right, you can you can build strong NAPF teams and really develop within and and see these lifters rise to the next level. And I'll tell you that other countries take it very seriously. Um, it was yeah, in really Panama last year. Um, a lot of the Latin American, Central American countries, wow, like they showed up big time. Um, people that you may not have heard of before, but they all have strong teams. Dominican Republic, um, Costa Rica, for sure, is massive. Yeah. You know, Puerto Rico, we have an IPF affiliate that's with Puerto Rico as well. So, I mean, it's like, uh, Mexico brings strong lifters. I mean, it's, it's, it's a different vibe too. Like they're kind of like, they're very passionate and, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's crazy and super fun. It's a long, it's a long because it's, it's all age divisions and it's e both equipment and classic. Um, so it's a, it's a long competition. It feels like a world's type event and, um, it's in the Cayman Islands. So, I mean, like, yeah, you can't, it'll be fun. it's, it's going to be a blast. Nice, um, we're all going to, we're all going to be there. It's going to be, a, it's going to be yeah. an amazing time. So yeah, I'm, we'll I'm so pumped. either way. So, and yeah. it's all about the experience. I mean, at the end of the day, you can still say you lifted internationally. You can still say you represented your country. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, it's an opportunity. So you may not, you may not be able to afford that opportunity the following year. So yeah, take it when you have it. And I'll just say also, um, you know, you get these initial invites, don't freak out because like, like, um, last year, you know, we had Zach Taylor, um, who, um, like you said, we didn't really know what the qualifying criteria was. And he, he thought it was just win his weight class, you know, partially from yeah. bad advice, bad advice from me. And, um, you know, he didn't take his third, I don't know. I think he only took one deadlift and didn't take his third bench, things like this. Cause he, he was he un, unopposed. So he thought he was going to be on the team. Turns out he was put in the alternate pool and he was a couple deep on that alternate pool. Yeah. And with the juniors and sub juniors, there's always going to be people that can't make it. And there's always going to be people that are not going to be able to, to go to Romania or to Cayman islands. So just be patient. Don't freak out. And probably if you're in one of those top two, three alternates, like there, there will be spots that will fall to you and we'll see how it goes. So, yeah. um, so yeah, don't, don't, don't lose it over, over just being placed in alternates at the beginning. So yeah. All right. Well, man, is there anything else that you wanted to uh, talk about re with re regard to this national team stuff? No, I think we, I think we touched base on everything. So yeah, absolutely. Without confusing everybody, you know, I think yeah. we're, we're good. 
I mean, it's so exciting. Like this has been building because, you know, we had high school nationals and we had some people ball out and then we had mm-hmm. university nationals, you know? And so it's different this year because we didn't have that last year. Like you said, yeah. last year, you just signed up for, for junior nationals, yeah, showed just, up in Orlando and that was it. Did the thing. And I like how we're providing the there's like a, 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 a roster currently of like, yeah. Hey, who's on the team right now? Yeah. Here's where you're ranking. Um, and then it just gives people a little more data and understanding of what's going on, which yeah. is it's pretty neat. So, and it gives them multiple opportunities. I mean, if you, if, if, cause oftentimes with juniors and sub juniors, um, the expensive, the cost of doing powerlifting is, is a big factor. Yeah. So yeah. now we have, you know, if you're in the East coast, you could hit up that competition in Scranton. Um, mm-hmm. if you're, if you're more West coast, you could come out to Scottsdale and uh, for junior nationals. So just try right. to create more opportunities. And, um, I think it's cool. Cause it kind of makes like a season, you know, yeah. um, in a sense, yep, for sure. So, and then of course, if you want, you can compete at opens and just kind of ride it out and just hope what you were able to do there is enough to make the team. So, yeah, absolutely. But, and there's enough space in between these competitions. You could do both like, like uh, yeah. Carolyn and, uh, and Alex Sador. Yeah, we're both doing you know? it. Um, which they both should do well enough to, to win. But yeah, as I've been saying, it just matters what happens on the day. Absolutely, man. All right, bro. Well, I think that's a good spot to leave it. Um, I'll let you go here. I know we both got a lot of stuff to go going on and whatnot. I'm super pumped to see you in Scottsdale and uh, we're a week out and to just, you know, see how everything unfolds with all these battles and the way the U S teams are going to shape up. Yeah, it should be fun. Um, and I'm kind of glad it's getting to an end too. So we can, move forward with team selection and really start to uh, get excited for Mm -hmm. APFs and worlds and and everything that people have been working for. Absolutely. We're going to hype it like crazy. Um, So, all right, man. Well, that's it for today for the power of team America podcast. This is a U.S. national team coach, Vin Mangione out there in uh, Kenmore, which is a suburb of Buffalo, New York. And um, thank you again for joining us. And thanks to everyone that's listening. We are out of here. Peace. Peace. See you guys. Thank you. And all right, whoops, I hit cancel.